Hey guys, uh, welcome back. And in today's practical, uh, it's going to be a bit a uh, complicated practical. So you need to pay much attention on this practical. In this practical, you're going to configure HCIP Instructor Certification Lab. Uh, in case you want to be an instructor or in case uh, you want to uh, perfect your networking configuration on the HCIP level, this practical is going to help uh, you understand uh, properly uh, what uh, BGP is, OSPF, and different different concept of HCIP. Uh, the lab, uh, the topology, this is the topology we are going to configure. The same topology we've set on our ENSP. So I hope you can see it clearly. Now, uh, the introduction part is the lab simulates the network of an enterprise. In this topology, router 1, router 2, router 3, and router 4 are the company headquarters, uh, headquarters routers. Switch 1, switch 2, switch 3, and switch 4 make up the headquarters park network. Router 5 is the company branch router. So, uh, router 5 here will act as the branch uh, router while uh, the other router the other four routers and the four switches are the company's headquarter devices uh, the link between router 4 and router 5 are the main link and the link between router 3 and router 5 are the backup uh, link so the exam question here is that ip address configure ip addresses on router 1 router 2 router 3 and router 5 based on the network topology the subnet mask of the ip address is 24 the subnet mask of the loopback interface is 32 so according to the plan we are going to see that then we are also going to configure the vlan plan after configuring the vlan plan we are going to configure mstp uh, to help prevent loops in uh, in our four switches then we are required to configure nexus ospf bgp and quality of service but in this practical uh i will leave uh, out this part of quality of service because i want to make sure that you understand this part of quality of service so i'm going to prepare a, a better lab on uh, quality of service meaning that in this practical we are only going to stop at the bgp then you make sure you follow the practical uh, uh the practical that we will follow this one will be now the quality of uh, of service So we are just going to start by setting the IP addresses on routers and also configuring the VLAN. So remember here, the VLANs that are allowed to pass are VLAN 3, uh, 4, 5, and uh, 6. And all the link between the switches are trunk link. Configure trunk link interface only to allow the respective VLAN to pass. Corresponding VLAN if this one on switch 1 are given IP addresses to enable communication uh, between the VLANs. Then uh, creating VLAN 10 on switch on switch, switch VLAN 10 on switch one and configure switch uh, gig, switch one's gig a bit zero slash zero slash one to belong to VLAN 10 and create the corresponding VLAN if IP address to 10.0.110.254. So I guess we are going to start with the IP address and the VLAN plan. So this is the topology. In this topology. We are also going to implement multi-area OSPF where you see here we have got area 1, area area 0, area 2, and area 3. As you all know that all areas must be connected to our backbone area, that is area 0. But for this case, area 3 here is not connected to our backbone area. So we are going to see how we are going to implement that so that area 3 should be able to communicate with area 0 and also other uh, areas to make sure that the routes are uh, reachable uh, within our network. So let's just jump straight away into our, our device devices here and uh, we are going to configure layer 2. So let me give this device a name. So this is going to be this is going to be switch one. Uh, 
Don't switch one, switch two. And this other one, uh, this other switch, uh, we give it a name of switch one. On switch one, we have got uh, the villain, so we are going to create the villain batch. So villain batch here was uh, three to six. Then there was also villain ten, but to enable communication with the uh, router two, the with the router one. So I think it should be villain batch. Uh, villain batch three to six. Then. Uh, also create a villain batch 10 after after that the next thing we are going to do is now now to configure the interfaces and allow the respective villains to pass so we have got on this switch one here we have got gig one we have got gig one gig, gig 13 gig one gig nine gig, uh, gig 14 so we start with gig nine so interface gig zero slash zero slash uh, nine Port link type, uh, port link type. This is a trunk port. Then port trunk. Allow pass a uh, villain. A uh, three two. Six. Then enter for gig. The next one will be gig thirteen. Gig thirteen is also a trunk port, allowing the same villains to pass. Then lastly, uh, not lastly, but you also have gig 14. Gig 14 here is, is a trunk port allowing the same uh, villains to pass. Then when you, you look at this uh, this gig one here, this one we are going to configure it as an access because it's connected to this router. Any, any interface that connects from a switch to a router uh, should be configured as an access so interface gig one uh, port link type here is an access the access port and in this access port we are told to for it to uh it should accept the default villain uh, port default port uh, default villain here uh, villain here should be villain 10 that is the villain uh, that connect to uh, router 1 so you quit and you could enter the interface villain if so interface interface villain if we start with the 10 and interface villain if 10 I think we have been told to uh, give it an IP address of 10 IP address of 10.0.110.254 uh, Samuel Mask of 24 You can confirm with that uh, So uh, They said uh, Villain 10 uh, should be given an IP address of that So it's the same IP address that we've configured After that We are going to configure this other villain So Villain uh, 3 so now we are going to configure interface VLAN these ones and the uh, the port is dot two five four. So create VLAN three IP address is going to be twenty dot zero dot three dot two five four. You can mask for twenty four subnet mask of 24 and you enter for gig 4 just alter that uh, gig now gig for interface villainy 5 I just edit edit the IP address change here 45 and villainy 6 IP address here into six. 
after that, let's say the configuration. We come to our switch to here. On switch to here, you're also going to create the respective VLAN. So VLAN batch uh, 326. Uh, 326. Now, after that, we configure the interfaces. So interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 9. Port link type, these are trunk port link type, uh, these are trunk, the trunk port, then port trunk. Allow pass uh, VLAN 3, 2, 6. Enter for gig 23 and 24. 23 and 24, configure as a trunk. Then allow VLAN 3 to uh, 6 to pass. Then enter for gig 24. This is being a trunk port. Okay. After that, we create and create the uh, VLAN if for VLAN communication. So interface uh, VLAN if uh, 3. IP address uh, will be. 10.0.10 to about 20 20.0.3.253 slash 24 gig 4 IP address here you just edit gig 5 IP address Edit that, I'll uh, give you that IP address. So, after that, I'm going to say and a switch on here. This is not switch for. I mean switch for a uh, villain batch. A uh, villain batch. Three, two, six. Then interface. Interface gigabit 24 Interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 14 Port link type, uh, port link type trunk Then port trunk Allow pass a VLAN 3 to 6 Then enter for gig 24, you do the same. Being a trunk port allows the same VLANs to pass. Okay. Come to switch 3, do the same. Now This one is switch uh, 3. VLAN batch here will be 3 to uh, 6. Interface are uh, gig. The interface are uh, gigs slash 13 and 23. 13 and 23. Interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 13. Port link type. Port trunk. 
Slap us a villain. Three, two, six. Then the same to gig 23. Trunk. Alapas villain 3 to R6. When that is done, you save. And you come, you come to uh, the routers on this side, give them IP addresses, and also configure the loopbacks. So, dot one here meaning that uh, we take this uh, network, then configure with the dot one. So, put here. This one uh, will be the R1. On that router, we are going to configure the IP addresses on the interface and also configure the loopback uh, interfaces. So interface gig zero slash zero slash one. IP address uh, will be 10.0.110.1.24. Let me test something here and see if it works. Okay, that one can communicate to the uh, this this interface can now communicate to the villain if interface that we, we concrete we created on villain if ten that we concrete on switch one meaning that it can ping that interface. After that we enter gig enter gig two IP address IP address for gig two. The address for gig 2 is 10.0.14.1 24. Then in interface serial uh, 1 slash 0 slash 0 IP address uh, IP address for the serial interface is 10. 0.12.1/24. Then you quit and create the interface for the loopback uh, 0 and 1. So interface loopback 0. IP address. Ten dot zero dot dot one. Plus that two, look back one. At the address of ten dot one dot one dot one slash that two. You save. You go to router two. You do the same. Two on router two, we have got uh, two serial interfaces that is serial uh, one and serial two. So, interface serial one slash zero slash zero, IP address of ten dot zero dot one two dot two slash twenty four. Then for serial two. IP address of 
Nice to enter for. Then we created the loopback interfaces. So quit and create the interface loopback zero. IP address of ten dot zero dot two dot two slash dot two. Enter for loopback one. IP address of ten dot zero dot one dot two dot two slash dot two. And after configuring the serial interface IP address and also on the loopback for I want to save. And the next is now on router 3. Router 3 has one physical interface that is gig 0 slash 0 slash 0 and two serial interfaces serial 2 and serial 3. Uh, let's start with the gigabit interface. Interface gig zero. IP address of ten dot zero dot three four dot three. 34.3 is a slash 24. Then enter for serial 2. So interface serial 1, serial 2 slash 0 slash 0. IP address of 10.0.23.3 slash 24. Then for serial 300, uh, IP address will be 10.0.35.0.35.3 the slash 24. Then uh, after that, we create that one loopback interface. So, create an enter interface loopback zero. IP address of ten zero dot three dot three slash thirty. That's 32. We are done with that. We save. Now we are on router 4. On router 4, here we give it a name. We have got Three physical interfaces that is gig zero, Ethernet uh, two, and also gig one. So interface interface Ethernet Ethernet Z, Ethernet two slash zero slash zero. IP address here is going to be. 10.0.14.4.14.4/24. Slash the next one we quit interface gig 0 slash 0 slash 0. IP address that is the interface that connect to uh, router number 3. So IP address is 10.0.34.4/24. Then uh, gig one that connects to router number one. So interface gig zero slash zero slash one. IP address will be 10.0.45.0.0.
dot all slash twenty four. When that is done, you, you quit and configure the loopback interface interface loopback zero IP address of ten dot zero dot four dot four dot thirty two. And that is done. Save config. Um, this one is AI router number five. Just got two interfaces, it gig one and also serial num serial number one. So interface gig zero slash zero slash one. The IP address here will be IP address here will be ten dot zero dot four four five dot Five. Not five. These are slash twenty-four. Then enter for the serial interface serial number one slash zero slash zero. IP address here will be ten dot zero dot ten dot zero dot. Three five dot five slash twenty four. Wait and also create for the loopback so interface uh, loopback zero IP address of ten dot zero dot zero ten dot zero dot five dot five slash thirty two. Save the configuration. After you save the configuration of the device, make sure you also save it on the topology here. Uh, so after press that, it's now uh, being saved. Uh, it has been saved. Now we've configured step one and step two, that is the VLANs and also the IP addresses. Let's now uh, check again the requirement. Configure IP addresses on that one has been done. Please configure establish to allow the respective VLAN to pass. Uh, all the link between the switches are drunk. Now we've also configured that to achieve communication between the VLANs. Creating VLAN 10 and configure that one. That one is done. We are now going to configure MSTP. When you look at this topology here. Uh, these routers are, are 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 implementing what is called redundancy so when we implement redundancy another problem occurs that is the root uh, loops so the loops will occur in our network so to cap that uh loop to cap the loops and while still ensuring the network reliability we are going to configure what is called a spanning tree protocol where here we are required to use mstp so as the practical request in order to prevent layer 2 loops and achieve traffic load balance between a uh, different different villain configure mstp in all switches creating mstp region rg instance 1 contain villain 3 4 instance 1 is the root and instance 2 with villain 5 and 6 on switch 2 is the root revision number is to 1 the PC, uh, which is the PC, the PC which connected to switch number four on gig fifteen, can access the network immediately after connected to the cable and prevent network concussion, which caused by BD, BD, BPDU on this uh, interface. That is, they are just require us to configure BPDU root protection. So meaning that we are going to require our a device PC here, so let's pick a PC. So, this PC here, we are being told that it has been connected to gig number 15. Gig 15, there, 
then we start it we know that any device connected to a switch to a end terminal that is act as the access access terminal so we are going to enter with we're going to enter that switch there then we can configure gig 15 so interface here bit 0 slash 0 slash 15 this is an access port so port link type access so port default uh, villain here let's use any ab among those four Villain, so let's use villain 3 default villain to villain 3 after that now let's configure mstp on these switches let's start with switch number one stp mode here we've been told stp mode we don't do it mstp then on instance one stp instance one a root primary then stp instance 2 they have told us instance 2 to be uh, root secondary on this root secondary then when that is done Let's configure region configuration. So region STP STP region configuration. Here region name they have told us region name to use RG region name. RG. Let's look at it. They've said uh, we use the region name RG. Then in on instance one, we are going to allow uh, content VLAN three and four. Then instance 2 contain VLAN 5 and 6. Division level here is division number 1. So uh, instance instance 1, VLAN 3 and 4. Instance 2, VLAN 5 and 6. Then uh, revision level here, they said revision level is number one. Then we configure active region configuration for the command configuration to take effect. Active region configuration. Active region configuration. After that, uh, the meaning that the command has taken effect. So we save. And we do the same on switch. Switch to here. On switch 2, instance 1 is going to work as the root secondary. So instance STP instance 1 a root secondary. STP instance 2 now will be the root primary so then we configure the STP region configuration then region name here will be RG after configuring the region name RG the next thing now we are going to configure is now instance 1 that's number one VLAN we are at VLAN 3 and 4 instance 2 VLAN VLAN 5 6 instance then the revision level here revision level we said number one after revision level active region configuration then we save we go the same and configure also on 
But what on switch four and switch five, we don't configure the uh, uh, the acti the the root primary and the root secondary. So just quit. After you quit, STP region configuration here region name your name here we said is rg then in instance one is on vlan that's one vlan three and four instance two vlan five six Sorry, so instance two is VLAN five six, not VLAN fifty six. That's two VLAN five six. So then a uh, revision level here is level number one. Active region configuration. Then we say. Then we finish on this switch number. On the H switch number three here, so STP region configuration. Region name here will be RG. Instance one, instance one, VLAN is uh, three and four. Instance two, VLAN is three and five and six. Active region. Revision level, sorry. We have the revision level here is number one. Active region configuration. So that save. Say yes. Then uh, in, in this practical, we are told that the um, PC, PC with uh, which connected to switch number four and gig 15, access the network immediately after connected when the with the network cable. When it uh, uh, access the network immediately means that it receives the uh, BPD once it's connected. So we are going to configure it as an edge port because it's a, uh, Port connect to the terminal. So now, enter interface interface VLAN if interface VLAN if fifteen. What interface VLAN? Interface gig fifteen gig zero slash zero. Slash fifteen. You say STP edge port, you enable edge port. After you enable edge port, we are told also to provide a uh, protection. So now you quit. After you quit, configure STP BPDU protection. Then you save, make sure you save your configuration. can see they said uh, to prevent network concussion which is caused by BPDU on this uh, interface so that's where we configure the BGP BF uh, BGP not BGP but BPDU uh, protection so we are done we are done with the MSTP our next step will now be our next step is now on OSPF so this is now where the uh, real task now starts so 
on this task you are told now now configure ospf as shown in the figure network uh network router 1 router 2 router 3 and router 4 the first loopback 0 not loopback number 1 interface don't allow as external routes to spread into uh area one what do they mean when they say that not allow as external route to spread in area one that is means that they just require you to configure a uh, stub area so in a stub area in a stub area so meaning router one here uh, not our area one here we lack at the stub area then switch one we lack at the area area border Area border router in a stub area does not advertise the receive AS external route to the stub area. Therefore, this reduces the uh, link state database and the routing table sizes of routers in the stub area. So, it is important to, to note some factors when we are configuring the uh, stub area. Like, for instance, when we are going to configure area 1 as the stub area, Conf no, you are required to know that the backbone area cannot be configured as a stub area. That is one of the key notes that you should put down. Then also, stub area needs to be configured on all the uh, routers in a stub area. Like for instance, here, switch, uh, switch one here will act as the router. So it's uh, will act as a router in a stub area. You need to configure a uh, stub on this switch and also on this switch to all the all the devices in a stub area need to be configured with stub then lastly also you need to know that virtual link cannot pass through a stub area so because the uh, abr router here does not uh, advertise the received as into uh, the stub area now abr here i uh, will adver uh, will advertise the default routes to into the uh stub area by using the type 3 lsa that has been generated by the abr so that is the thing that these guys were trying to uh tell us that now uh don't allow as external route to spread into area one meaning that they just require us to configure a stub area on that router number one then you are the next is aggregate the network in area one to slash eight on switch one and reduce the L more lsa entries further by further configuration area three is isolated ospf area please let the area three communicate with other areas normally so meaning that when they say area 3 here is isolated from areas 2 and area 0 they require you to configure uh, a virtual link so the virtual link will enable area 0 that is the backbone area to be able to communicate with uh, area 3 that is on a, a different a different uh, that is not directly linked to that uh, backbone uh, area we all know that for for us to configure OSPF, all the areas must at least one of the interfaces of the uh, routers must be connected to a backbone area. So that's something I know. I believe you know. So here, router area number three is not connected to area. Is not has no any direct uh, link to area uh, zero. So we are going to configure now a virtual link to enable the routes on area three to be reachable on area zero. So that is the that is the task for the OSPF. Then our last point is here is that configure router one to prevent summary routes of area one announced on area two, and you should use a prefix list in this step. So now we are just going to configure now OSPF. Now knowing that we are going to link that using the virtual link, so we start on. On this our switch here on that switch there what we do uh, OSPF versus ID 1 
then we advertise uh, the networks of network of 10 this is area also area number one then we advertise the network of 10 we are going to use uh, that two best uh, interface ospf so 0 dot not 10 20 dot 0 dot 3 dot 253 I'll get a mask of 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 next is uh, we, we we just edit that and change it to dot 4 dot 4 dot 253 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 then for dot 5 the 5 dot 0 dot 253 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 6 we edit that After that, we go now. We go on this on this switch here. Also configure OSPF. So OSPF here process ID is one area. We are on area area number one. On area number one, we are going to advertise uh, these networks and also remember to advertise the network for VLAN if number ten. So network of villain if number 10 will be 10 dot 0 dot 110 dot now that was on dot 254 i got mask of 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 after that uh now configure the network for villain if uh, villain 3 so network of 20 dot zero dot zero dot three dot two five four zero dot zero dot zero dot zero we should see it exchanging the lss then to exchange the lss now for dot four Then dot five dot six. The last one is dot six. Let's just edit on that point. Six sheet. Okay. So we are done with that OSPF on area. On on that point. Then we were told something that we should not allow the AS external route to be advertised into our OSPF area number one. So while just just on the same uh, area one here, just configure it as tab. Save. Now come also on, we said that all, one of the attributes we said about the stub is that 
uh, we need to configure area we need to configure all the routers in the stub area stub on all the routers so I'm switch to here also configure the stub then we save Still exchanging the LSS, so it's now full. Then we save. So we are done with. Uh, we are done with area one. We are now going to our area number, area number zero. So while on that switch, we are going to configure area zero. Sorry, sorry, guys. I think I'll configure something wrong here. Uh, ten dot ten dot one ten was supposed to be on area zero, not area one. So this OSPF one area one display this. We want to undo some. We want to undo that network. So we're going to do this there a network here. Undo that network. Any display now? Uh, you see it has gone. We quit. Then now enter area zero. Area zero is where you advertise that network. So on area zero, we only advertise that uh, one network of 10.0.110.0.254. Then we go to we go to our AR router one here. On that router, we said we are going to configure area one, area zero, and area two. So OSPF one router ID. Sorry. We said we are going to use the router IDs of the loopback. So OSPF one uh, router ID here will be ten dot zero dot one dot one for the loopback one on router number one. Area here is going to be area number zero. Area zero we're going to attach the network of 10.0.110.1 wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0. Just exchanging the LSS. Then we go to area number two. So on area number two, we are going to configure. Uh, we are told to configure only loopback zero. And also for the uh, physical uh, interfaces. So, as the practical suggests here, uh, network for uh, network for loopback zero, R1 and R R2, R3, R4 loopback zero, not a uh, interface loopback number one. So I hope you can see I uh, can see that clearly. So we are now going to on area area number two. So area number two, wait, area number two, and area number two, it addresses the network for the loopback, so network of, the loopback of will be 10.0.1.1, .1. I'm going to mask of 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Another network that we advertise the network for the serial interface that is a network of 10.0.0 .0 .0. not 
10.0.12.1 Wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0 .0. Then uh, the interface that connect to router number 4 So the network for that interface will be 10.0.14.1 Wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0 .0. I'll display this and see. Okay. There was something that we were told here about uh, uh, root summarization. So we are told aggregate networks or in area one as twenty dot zero dot zero slash eight. On switch one to reduce the LSS entries. So while on area on switch one, aggregate the networks in area one as this one on switch one. So on area one. So you enter into that interface. So area one. Display this and see. So we're going to aggregate uh, these networks. We're going to aggregate these networks into slash eight. So now will be ABR summary. ABR summary. The network will be twenty dot zero dot zero dot zero. Wildcard mask will be two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero. That is the slash eight uh, they meant. So that let's display this you can see it here so it's going to summarize all uh, these routes so that we lose uh, we are going to decrease the number of routing entries when these routes are advertised into area number area number zero so only this uh this network here will be advertised into area number zero that one will help re reduce the routing information on uh, the routers here so after after completing with area number with the router one we go to router number two on router number two here it's also on area number two and has got loopback zero and also the interface address for serial number one So OS, uh, system view, OSPF here, router ID is 10.0.2.2, .2. area here will be area number, area is going to be area number 2, on area number 2, so that's the network of loopback, that is 10.0.2. 2.2 .2, wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0 .0. then the network for the serial uh, number one so network of 10.0.12.2 wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0 when that is done we go to we now go to switch router number Router number four here, it's also on the same area number two. So OSPF root ID here is 10.0.4.4. Area is area number two. On area number two, that's the network for the loopback. First of all, 10.0.0.4.4. We had mask of 0.0.0.0. The next network is the network that connects now to uh, the downward router that is router number router number one. So network of 10.0.14. dot 
4 forget mask of 0.0.0.0 after that you have to the network that connect to now router number this network here that connect to router number 4 here that is dot 4 here so network of 10.0.34 Dot, dot four I'll get a mask of zero dot zero dot zero dot zero so let's just save the configuration then the lastly the uh, we are now configuring area and area three so we enter into area here into this router here now we are on area number six. Area three. On area three, the advertised network will be now gig here will be gig slash twenty three. So it will be a network of ten dot zero dot two three dot two three dot Two, I'll get a mask of zero dot zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. That's on the only network that should be advertised while on that router on area three. Then we come to area on route this router here. OSPF router ID here will be 10.0.3.3 advertise the area for a uh, loopback 0 and the area that connect to router number 4 and also the route uh, that connect to router number 2 so network of area 3 network of 10.0.3 3.3 wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0 .0. after that we are attached the network that connect to router number 4 so network of 10.0.34.3 wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 then the network that connect to router number 2 so network of 10.0.23.3 wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0 so we are going to check uh, we are going to check the OSPF routing to see so first of all uh, let's begin with the OSPF routing on this hour stub area display OSPF LSTB and display the OSPF LSDB you can see you can see that uh, type 5 and type 4 LSS have not been advertised but type 3 have been generated so type 3 have been generated This one are all only on area one and area this one are on area zero. Then when we look at these ones are on area number area number one. All the all the this, all the networks to all these interfaces. Then also we say that uh uh type three LSS uh in a stub area as do not need to be advertised into a stub area but to be able to reach the external routes we are going to use now the default route so when you look at the default route is the, uh, the, the default route is this one here 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0 then the next hop is 10 uh, dot 0, .0, .0 dot, uh, 110 dot 254 
So you see, now as they said, we should not allow the AS external root tool to be able to pass into a stub, uh, into a stub area, that is area number one. That has been achieved from the uh, outcome of the our display. Also, we can display OSPF uh, routing table. Display OSPF routing. Display OSPF routing. Sorry, our device is kind of hanging. Display. OSPF routing. When you display the OSPF routing, you can see you can see uh, we have got a uh, four inter area. Then we have got that two inter area routes. We have got that two inter area routes. I want to give this PC an IP address and see if it can reach even a uh, switch switch here. So because we configured we configured MSTP, let's see if to work if that MSTP works. So 20 give an IP address of 20 dot 20.0 20 20.0.3 just any IP address just within the range then our mask will be 255.255.255 because it's a slash 24.0 our gateway will be on switch 1 so on switch 2 so that is 20.0.3.255 Three. apply and see if we can ping so ping ping the gateway first of all 10.0.3.253 it's able to reach that gateway what about uh what about this interface here on this router here? Can this PC here reach that interface? So, we ping. So, ping 10.0.1.2.255. 10 .1. It's also able uh, to reach uh, that uh, route. So meaning that our link from this PC number one here all the way up to router one here is uh, reachable. Now meaning that OSPF is working on that link properly. But now while on this router here display OSPF uh, routing. When you display OSPF routing we have got only uh, we have got seven inter area then only one into area that is the area the area of 20.0.0.0/8 you see uh it has been uh summarized so it has only picked the summer summarized route it does not pick all the all this uh all the other routes so, uh, Routes before summarization are called uh, specific routes. So after they are summarized, they are called the summary routes. So 20.0.0.0/8. These are summary routes from uh, specific routes of this 20.0.3, uh, 20.0.4, 20.0.5, 20.0.6. On this router here, we summarize it so that we reduce the uh, routing table so now it has been summarized to that route you are seeing there that now being the specific route uh, being the uh, summarized route now so when you, do, you look at that you, you see we can't there's no area 3 here there's no area 3 so meaning that because area 3 is not directly connected to the stub area those routes on area 3 cannot be advertised into our uh, routing table on area 
zero here so what we do in such a scenario in such a scenario what we do is now where we are going to configure the virtual link to link now the uh backbone area into uh, area number three so well 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 on that outer one here we are going to enter area number two so ospf area here will be area number two on area number two we are going to configure a virtual link so v link pi the pi you are going to use now we are going to create the PI using the loopback interface. So now the loopback for we are going to create the virtual link between router number one and router number two. So the loopback for router number two will be ten dot zero dot two dot two. Then we quit. Don't quit. We just save. We come to uh, our router here. Router number two also create the billing PSO OSPF. Area here is area one. Area number two, not area one. So area two, billing here PI is going to establish a peer with router number one. So billing PIA here will be now 10.0.1.1. Display OSPF uh, routing. Then display OSPF routing. Uh, you can see here that we have got seven inter area then we have got we have got three inter area so the three inter area here uh, the first inter area is 10 uh, 10 .0 .0 .0 .0 .3, 10 .0 .3 .3. Uh, that is the area that is on area number area number three the next stop is 12 dot as 10.0.12.2 that is on router number one there so while you are on this router here you should be able now to configure the loopback for another network another external network was for uh, slash 23 that is the next stop is still on the same uh, router number two that is 10.0.12.2 we are we are, gone, we are trying to ping now the loopback so 10.0 dot three dot three actually able to reach that uh, look back also while you come on uh, the routing tables here so display OSPF uh, routing and display OSPF routing you can see the uh, we have got four I've got four inter routes inter inter route so the first one is 10.3 the second one is 10.23 the third one is 10.10.10.0.110 and uh, the last one is 10.0.0.0 uh, uh, slash 8 that is uh, summarized rule after that i think now we are we are we are, we are done with the ospf let me look at it and see if there's something still remaining so on the ospf part we've configured we've we've enabled area three to uh, it's now able to communicate normally with now routers in the ospf now configure router one at prevent summary routes on area one to, prevent uh, summer route on area one being announced on area two you should use a prefix so prevent the summarized route from being announced on the number on area two so i'm going to use now with they said we use ip prefix so ip ip prefix here the prefix id here we are going to use the hc the name we are using let me give your name of hcip then after that uh, we are going to give it the index of 10 let me give it index number 10 then uh we are going to deny that we are going we are going, we are going to deny it from being on area number two so 20.0.0.0 slash eight and uh we tell it greater than uh, 8 uh, less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to 
a uh, mask of eight. After that, uh, when that is done, uh, the next thing now we are going to do is now uh, we are done with those PF now. We are going next is to now configure now the next, which is now our last uh, implementation here. That is the BGP. So after configuring the OSPF, you are required here to now configure BGP next. We are configuring the BGP now. We can see here we have got a uh, different AS, AS 400, AS 500, AS 300, AS 200. So we are required now to configure IBGP and EBGP neighbors. IBGP use loopback zero interfaces while uh, the EBGP will use the physical interfaces and import router once or uh, look back zero on that one onto BGP configuring. So let's start uh, or straight away do that. So let me just now uh, uh, give them about the boundaries. So here, this one is on BGP uh, 500, this one is on BGP 400, this one is on BGP 300, then these two here, are on, these are on BGP 200, while the other one is on BGP 500. So, S here, S here is uh, 400. S here is uh, 500. This one is on S. AS 300 then this one is on AS 200 AS 200 so router 1 and router 2 is going to establish an IBGP peer while router A router 1 and router 4 router 2 and router Three, router 3 and router 5, router 4 and router 5 both are going to establish what is called EBGP uh, peers as you can see from this uh, topology here this one will be EBGP, EBGP, EBGP peers so that's it uh, that's what we're going to configure now, now after we configured uh, the virtual link let's see if now while on this router, can it reach? Uh, while on this PC, can it reach router number three here? After we configured the virtual link, so we are going to try and ping 10.0.3.3. It's able to reach, uh, meaning that uh, that the routes are uh, on the routes here are being advertised into this area zero. So PC one here is able to reach PC number. It's able to reach router number uh, three. What about router number four? So let's ping the loop back for router number four. Four dot four. Four dot four. It's also able to reach uh, router number four. What about router number five? That is on the branch side. Let's also check the connectivity with the router on the branch side. Dot five. Dot five. Uh, it's, able, uh, it's not able to reach uh, that router, meaning that it doesn't know where that uh, that uh, network is. So that is the point we are going to implement here by configuring the BGP. PC1 here should be able to communicate uh, with uh, the loopback for uh, router number 5 here. That is on BGP uh, of uh, 500. So that is 
where we are going to begin so now we begin by configuring the bgp so let's just configure bgp so bgp here will be bgp 200 on bgp 200 it's going to establish a peer with a, a ibgp peer with the router number two so peer uh, 10 dot zero dot two dot two that is the loopback so as number they are on the same as number because this is ibgp peer after that we connect it to the loopback interface because it's not a directly uh, connected uh, interface so interface peer 20.0.2.2 connect to uh, loopback interface loopback zero after that we also create another ebgp peer with uh, a s400 so peer peer 10.0.14.4 a s number here will be now uh will be now uh, 400 we won't tell to connect the looper because this one here it, where, where, while establishing ebgp peer we use the physical interface now after that i will quit and come on to come to, to this other router here so bgp 200 on BGP 200, AS, BGP 200 here is going to be 10.0.1.1.1. AS number here will be 200. Then here we tell it to connect to the 10.0.1.1. .1. Connect to loopback interface 0. after that we we also create ebgp peer so ospf not as ebgp peer will be now peer peer 10 dot 0 dot 2 dot 2 3 dot 3 that is uh, on AS, AS here is on AS three hundred. Then we were told now to advertise the loopback for loopback one. Advertise into it on the two, uh, those network into the BGP. So a network of uh, loopback one that is ten dot zero dot not 10.0.10.1.2.2 uh, mask of 32 also come on this bgp here advertise that network of loopback number one so network of 10.1.1.1 mask of 32 come to this our bgp here so bgp here is bgp 400 on bgp 400 is going to establish a peer with bgp uh 200 so peer 10.0.14 uh dot one the s number is a s 200 also establish a peer with a s500 so peer 10.0.45.5 a s number here is uh, a s number 500 on 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 router number three here we are on BGP 300 and it's established an eBGP peer with peer with 10.0.23.2. The S number is 200. 
then uh, another peer with uh, router number five so peer 10.0.35.5 the s number here is uh, 500 then you come to this AS500, so BGP BGP500, it's going to establish peer with so peer 10.0.45, that is with AS400.4, AS number here is 400 then another another one will be peer 10.0.35.3 the s number is uh, 300 Then we were told now you also going to advertise the loopback zero into our router number five. So advertise the network for that. So network of 10.0.5.5. A network does not exist. So quit interface uh, loopback zero display this why does it say the network does not exist okay let's go back I've seen where I made the mistake so quit so BGP 500 we address that network so network of 10.0.5.5 uh, mask of 32 so you'll be able to take effect so display bgp uh, routing table when I display BGP routing table you can see the networks uh, the networks that should be uh, we want to reach so will be 10. 0.5.5 and uh 10.1.1 that is on a, a, a router number one 10.1.2.2 that is on router number two you are being told that 4.5 it's just any address and the next hope for dot one will be you can you have got two next hope so when you want to get to the network of 10.1.1.1 slash 32 you have got two options. The first next hop will be on router number four. The next, uh, the other hop will be on router number, router number three. So that is 10.0.35.3. Uh, that is on router number three, and 10.0.45.4. That is on router number four. So also on uh, when you want to get to the network of uh, 10.1.2.2. We have got two, uh, two next stop. There are routes that you can follow. That is 10.0.3.3 uh, on router number 3 and dot 4 on router number and router number 4. So here is where we are going to configure now the BGP attribute to now help a preparation select one route. Uh, that is the main uh, the main link said that we want to uh, use the link router number 4 here as the uh, main uh, as the main link. So also one on, on this router here let's display a bgp a routing table only display that you, you still see the same network when you want to get to a network of 10.0.5.5 we have got two uh, uh, routes you can follow the first route is 10.0.23.3 that is on router number three and 10 uh, .0 .14, uh Dot four that is on router number four so you can either follow this route or you follow this route so that is where we are going to now uh, change the attribute so 
configure IBGP, that one we've configured, enable loopback on that one, we have address.network into the BGP. Configure BGP root, uh, root, root IDs as uh, loopback IP addresses. So loopback zeros. So let's configure, let's configure now the BGP. Let's just give them a BGP root ID. So BGP here, BGP here was 200 root ID, root ID is uh, 10.0.1.1. Uh, yes. It's same to this guy. So BGP 200. A root ID here. Root ID is 10.0.2.2. Come to this guy also, give it the root ID. BGP. BGP. 400 root id root id of 10.0.4.4 say yes on router number three also give it a router a bgp root id so bgp 300 root id of 10.0.3.3 Come to the number 5, give it a root ID it. So BGP 500 Root ID here is 10.0.5.5 Say yes. Let's see if this router can reach, uh, this PC can reach that now. Add still cannot reach, means, mean, means that uh, we are not done yet. So let's look at our service continue, configuration continuation. Now, we are told now to import a root, this one, to BGP by use of a root policy on R1 and import the root uh, 10. 0 0.55 uh, to OSPF on router number 4. Set the IBGP root priority on router. IBGP priority as 100 on router number 1. So let's do that. So while, while on this router here, we need to now import the OSPF into BGP. That is the OSPF we are told now import this root here into BGP using the root policy. So we are going to create that root policy. So we create and on that root so IP IP prefix one. Uh, we are now going to now permit IP prefix one now permit uh, twenty dot zero dot zero dot zero eight now greater than or equal to 8 uh, less than or equal to less than or equal to a mask of 8 on that after that we create a routing policy so a root policy here a root policy here we name it hcip and node uh, permit tell it to permit node number 10 permit node number 10 node number 10 if match, uh, if match, uh, pref if match IP prefix, set for bit node number one. If it matches the IP prefix number one, I'm going to apply the preference value of apply preference value of 100 because oh, when you look at that, what they required here is that. Uh, we set the IBGP uh, root priority to 100 on router number one so that it will be now able to select uh, that root there. So, uh, 
to apply. <coughs> Then we quit and also we create an empty node so that other routes are not affected. So we create an empty node. Empty node to be IP root policy HCIP node number 20. Then we leave it at uh, we leave it like that. After that, we are going now to apply. We are going to apply that in when we uh, uh, import uh, BGP uh, the roots into BGP. So BGP here is now 200. So on the 200, uh, we are going now to import it. So here we tell it peer. The peer will be now on the IBGP peer on router number two. We tell it 10.0.2.2 and we tell uh, root policy, root policy, we said it was a JCIP and we tell it to import, import the root. So while uh, then we quit and trigger the root refresh. So I refresh, refresh BGP all import. Let display a uh, BGP display BGP routing table twenty dot zero dot zero dot zero display a uh, BGP uh, routing table. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's now import the roots into OSPF. So on OSPF here, <coughs> we're going to configure a root also. Uh, we're going to configure a root policy also on that on that uh, router number four. Display OSPF routing. And display SPF routing. We can't see that network towards 10.0.5.5. So we want to import that one into OSPF. So IP IP prefix now prefix number one index uh, 10 prefix number one tele index number 10 to permit node permit network of 10.0.5.5.5 that is a slash 32 greater than or equal to 32 less than or equal to mask of 32 when that is true I'm going to configure the root now. Uh, root root policy root policy here. Name it HCIP. HCIP. Tell it to permit node number node number ten. Uh, if if it's match that if it match IP prefix. If it match IP prefix one, I'm going to tell it to apply a local frequency one hundred. So apply local preference value of two hundred. Quit. A uh, root refresh. After that, we are going now to OSPF and we import it to, into OSPF. So OSPF. So big import, import now, import, import root static, import BGP. What BGP uh, root policy?
export policy now we said was HCIP. We are now going to import BGP routes into the OSPF HCIP. Let me see if I can ping that guy now. Still not able. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, we'll solve it as we proceed. So import BGP this one by use of root policy into the import the roots. OSPF set the IBGP roots uh, as this one. Now uh, we are going to troubleshoot that. Now let's uh, let's now configure the other attributes. So. We are being told here influence IBGP root selection by modifying AS path attribute on router number three to guarantee router number five get a BGP roots uh, through the main link. So I'm going to uh, ensure that router number five here get the BGP root through the main link. So through router number four up to router number five. So by changing the AS path attribute on router number uh, three, also influence IBGP uh, root selection by modifying local preference value on router number two to guarantee router two to access uh, through backup link. So let's configure AS path attribute. So on router number three, I'm going to configure AS path attribute. So enter router number three. Rule number three, what we do, first of all, we configure the uh, the prefix uh, list. So IP, IP, prefix list number one, uh, index number 10, permit, uh, permit, index number 10, we're going to, to permit, 10.1.1.1 uh, 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 greater than or equal to 32 less than or equal to a, ma a mask of 32. If that's true, you create a root policy. So a uh, root policy, root policy here, we're going to name it HCIP, not only to permit node number. Before we do that, uh, let's uh, configure an empty node. It and configure an empty node on this other route, this other router uh, that we were to import OSPF. So. an empty node so on that router I yeah, still on router number three so on the permit, uh, we are going to permit node number 10. So we tell it if that's not match, if it matches, it matches uh, IP prefix, IP prefix number one. If it matches that IP prefix number one, we're going to apply AS path value. We're going to apply AS path of six we modify the value to 600 and 700 which is then tell it additive then display bgp 
routing table and of network of 10.1.1.1 and display that you can see yes so i don't do that let's see display bgp routing table 10.0.10.1.1.1 and display that you can see AS path have not been modified yet. Our network is the destination towards that. Okay. After Great. After they apply the policy, we didn't create an empty node. Now let's also create an empty node so that other routes are not affected. Uh, so create an empty node number 20. Then we quit. Enter the BGP and BGP 300. BGP 300, we tell it a, a peer. PS is going to be a 10.0.23.2 uh, uh, we, we are bind the root policy uh, root policy here is HCIP and tell it to export We quit. Then we, we uh, trigger root refresh. So refresh BGP all BGP all uh, root export. Now let's display. Let's try and display now and see. Yet, still yet, as uh, the AS path attribute has not been modified. Let's now trigger a root to number. Root to uh, IP IP prefix IP prefix value here will be number one prefix value number one index index ten permit uh, we are going to permit a network of ten that is on root number five root five and mask here is going to be thirty two greater than or equal to 32 uh, less than or equal to 32 uh, root policy root policy here is going to be HCIP permit node number 10 node number 10 If match IP prefix number one apply a uh, preference apply AS path attribute of six hundred seven hundred additive 
and that is done equate and bind it the bgp 300 now the peer will be 10 uh, dot zero dot dot two three dot dot two three dot two a root policy here hcip export when we export the roots we quit root refresh root refresh a bgp all export and give it time for it to now Uh, let's give it time for it to load okay let's uh let's check uh, let's check on uh, bgp uh, root again so display bgp uh, routing table for 10 dot one dot one dot one okay uh, at this at least this time uh, it has returned a positive result uh, it has exchanged that as path now when you compare uh the destination the root id is this one the destination network is this one so the path here we are being told that as path here is uh from as 400 to as uh, 200 and when you scroll down when you scroll down on as on this a uh, router from router a uh, router from router number three it is telling that it is goes through as 300 as 300 600 and 700 so the as advert as route advertised by router number three is uh, longer than that advertised by router number uh, router number four on router number four here this is a router number four uh it is as from 400 to 200 so uh the router advertised by router number three being the uh, the longest uh path uh, it will be ignored by uh, router number five so router number five will now preferentially select uh router number four uh to four as the forwarding path uh towards the network of 10.1.1 uh, so I think that uh, has been uh, proved now uh, even if you look at here we are being told uh, uh, there's a uh, best route this is the best route here while on this AS path here uh, uh, we are told that uh, it is not best uh, it is not a uh, best it is not the be preferred uh, route for the AS path but this one here it says it's the best uh, as path uh, route uh, for the network of 10.1.1.1 uh, from router number 5. So now that means that uh, a link uh, towards router number 4 will act as the main link while the link towards router number 5 will act as the backup link because uh, router number 5 here, router number 3 here, the longest path here has been uh, uh, changed. Uh, so when it select will now be selecting router number four so let's uh display a bgp uh, routing table display bgp uh, routing table when you display bgp routing table you can see several routes here we have got routes towards uh, ten, uh, uh, the the summarized route here. We have got the routes toward uh, those uh, two or uh, SPF loopback. Uh, th those two loopback one. 
and uh, the network 34 network 2.3 network all the uh, up to the network of 10.0.5.5 so meaning that the uh, ospf uh, root uh, have been imported to spf root to 10.0.5.5 has been imported to spf you see when now we display the bgp routing table you can see the network of 10.0.5.5 meaning that it has been imported into that uh, uh routing table and now also we come on also we come on this display bgp uh, routing table and display bgp routing table you can see all the routes all the routes that are uh, can be reachable on that router and on switch one here a uh, display display ospf uh ospf uh ospf peer ospf routing and display ospf routing you can see here the networks that are can be reached all these are the routes that can be reached so we have got a uh, inter area are 40 while intra is four routes so you can see there the default routes have been advertised here on that as being eight being in the stub area with that now can we now uh try to ping our router on the, can we try to ping a router on the branch here while we are on pc uh one here and see the results so ping uh 10.0.5.5 5.5 okay when we ping uh, when we ping that router this time now we see it's returning a positive feedback meaning that uh the routes are from pc1 here all the way towards the uh router on the internet are reachable meaning that the bgp here the bgp we configured has now helped us now to get to the our branch network so the, the OSPF has been imported, the BGP root uh, 10.0.5 has been imported to the OSPF on router number 4 and also uh, the root of 20.0.0.0 slash 8 that was summarized has also been imported into BGP, to the BGP. So meaning that our network is fully working and uh, everything has been confirmed. If PC1 can ping the router on the can ping the router on the branch meaning that uh, our practical has been implemented successfully guys and that is the practical we are to implement today and i believe uh through uh you've learned something and if you found this video was so much helpful to you remember to subscribe also to support our videos so that uh we produce more video of your like so you just hit us in the comment section to request uh, anything you want us to help you tackle but our next lab we will be going to configure uh, I'm going to help you configure now quality of service so in this practical we want to implement quality of service also but now I'm going to leave that part for the next practical so the next practical will now be quality of service so that one we leave for the next practical I'll this one this practical ends there because PC1 here can be able to ping PC2 here. So display PGP display OSPF LSDB. When display OSPF LSDB, LSDB, you can see all the type uh, 3 LSS that have been advertised in that network. So, thank you and let's, uh, guys, let's just meet in our next uh, labs.